a lot of our kids' social activity happens online. And it's so hard not to get in that panic mode, especially when you have little kids. Like, everything you hear is bad. And I'm not discounting that there is really bad stuff out there and it is scary. And especially when you have little kids, you want to protect them from that. But we also have to recognize that there is a lot of good there too. Life gets easier if we figure it out together. Welcome to The Lisa Show. A lot of people ask me what I think about screen time and phones with my kids, assuming that I have some answers. Maybe it's because of the age of my kids that some of them have started to leave. Maybe it's just um, because I talk a lot. And so people assume that, like, I have figured out media because that's what I work in. But I realize that I've really changed my mind on a lot of these issues. And it's a lot more complex than I originally thought it was going to be. So I've invited McKay Menden, who is a producer on The Lisa Show, to kind of explain why this is not an easy topic. Sure. One of the reasons I'm here is because I am what they call a zillennial. Oh, yeah. That so means. fancy. I, uh, the way I would describe it is I, I know too much about TikTok to be a real millennial, but not enough to be Gen Z. Oh, is <laughs> that the litmus yeah, test? I'm a I little like too it. dumb to keep up with the Gen Z people. <laughs> yeah, and, and I think that it, because of that, you and I have a very different perspective on yeah. how, how we see it. And, and I always tell my kids that I am a, a digital immigrant and they're digital natives. And sure. so even the way our brains work and... Um, relate to it is going to be different. And there's a lot of significance about that. I think that sometimes we don't talk about when we talk about, well, what should the rules be for screen time? It's like, wow, where do we even start? So I kind of wanted to (laughs) go back into time, (laughs) right? (laughs) Where our music was kept on CDs and our videos were on, I know, cataloged on DVDs and we kept them in sleeves and these big books like meticulously ordered, right, right. all that kind of stuff. And this is what happened um, because the this renaissance began not too long ago. And I always tell my kids, I'm the kind of a grandma of the internet. Sure. Because I remember when I got my first flip phone, uh, I had three kids already. And oh, I know, isn't that crazy? And I learned how to text and all of that very reluctantly because I thought, no, I want to do all this stuff in real life. So I was a little hesitant to it, but... When you have kids, they introduce you to right. certain things in a different way. So not to date you per se, but <laughs> but w- and what at what point in your parenting did internet become a factor? Like when did that become a conversation between you and your husband? Like how internet is changing your parenting? That that, oh yeah, that's a really good question because I remember having an email account when I was teaching school before I had kids, but nobody really used it. Mm-hmm. And when it started to affect our parenting was actually probably pretty early on because our oldest it was very good at it and really liked mm-hmm. it and is very cerebral and is very um, introverted and found a whole world that, and he, even as a toddler, you would have these like CD-ROMs that you could put into your computer okay. to have educational software, right. you know, and I thought, this is so great. This is going to teach him phonics and the graphics and, it att- and, and it'll gamify sort of education. So this is mm-hmm. at one step up to the to the, like, coloring pages that I've, you know, made for him and things like that. I thought, oh, this is cool, and I can collect educational CDs, and then this is the way that I can control that. And so that's where it began and where we started talking about it. But the draw to come on the computer, Mm -hmm. to play on the computer, what happened, it seems to me, and I know it's not this dramatic, but it seems like it was overnight. And we were like, wait, oh, so what? They just want to be on this all the time, and um, that changed everything because no one, my mom didn't prepare me for that. Right. We were all figuring it out in real time. So for you as someone who came to understand computers and the internet as an adult, what was it like then seeing your son and your other kids like be so naturally pulled to the internet and want to be there all day? Like, like how do you navigate you know, their relationship with technology that probably felt so alien to you as someone who didn't even have that growing up? Well, first of all, I was completely blown away by how quickly they 
adapted to I it. Bet. How yeah. how their brains worked. They knew how to handle, you know, the mouse and <laughs> get around in different files and would remember that faster than I did. Mm. And that happened really early. And yeah. I just thought, this is so crazy. I wonder what kind of effect it will have on them. And that's what's so funny is, is that we don't really have all of the research about what it is, but it's that genie is out of the bottle. There's yeah, no putting it back sure in. It can be scary thinking about. Well, and it was overwhelming, but my kids. I do feel though my nature, especially like having an education background as a teacher, just thinking, no, this should, I, I, that's how I saw it. I thought with each new technology, there's always somebody saying, oh no, it was better without it, you know, and we yeah. don't have horse-drawn carriages and have, right. you know, kerosene lanterns. And so I, I love that idea of technology, especially in education. So I leaned into that and thought, well, this is really exciting. And so let's just highlight the good of it. Um, no, it's no, very progressive I, Yeah, it's you. very, well, you know, that's what it started off. You like to think that way. Yeah. <laughs> I like to think that way. Sure. Because, you know, the best of it, if you really think about it, is that your kids do have access to all this information instead of opening and cracking up the encyclopedia, you know, right. and doing a report. You just have access to everything and so many. And you can yeah. share pictures with grandma who lives states away. And that's how it started. And it was interesting because my oldest, again, is 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 introverted and very smart and excelled at this mm -hmm. and loved it. And there was a little bit of he hesitancy of where I was like, you know, he was on, we made him to, like take soccer, youth soccer and, and baseball and play outside. And he doesn't like that kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. And he thought it was so funny. And as he got older, would reason to us, well, why is playing a game like outside more virtuous or, or have more value than playing right. a mental game inside on online? And, mm -hmm. you know, I'm not good at one, but I'm really great at the other. Why is one better than the other? And uh, he had a point, right? Yeah, but as a parent, as someone who didn't have this growing up, you would immediately think, you know, getting out, get outside, play with friends. I know, that and makes I, so much more sense. I couldn't, I couldn't verbalize it then, but I have now of just saying you need to have balance, right? Like everyone yeah. needs to go outside and have sunshine. That's just like a human yeah, condition. It's a chemical necessity. <laughs> it's a chemical right. necessity. Yeah. And so we, our conversations changed. So we didn't start off saying technology is bad. We started off saying, yeah, this is great, and let's just not. Spend too much time on it and let's just do that and now and again my oldest really excelled in this and taught himself computer languages like html and so java cool. like all this stuff so that i didn't even know yeah. no so much smarter <laughs> than me and my brother who is much is very similar to him as well was so excited and sort of fed it and like gave him a raspberry pi which for those who don't know i had to learn was basically just a a computer that he could build himself so he was building his own computer and I just thought, okay, this is cool. But there are also drawbacks from it, like anything. Right. Like but you said, this was my introduction to it. Yeah, you said you started off thinking technology isn't all bad. Yeah. There are points where you did say technology is all yeah. bad. Yeah, I mean, there is the worst of it. And, sure. you know, when we're talking about really gross, horrible websites. And sure. also websites that, like, my son would find but was not emotionally ready to mm. to be on and and this was in the wild west before there were like even rating systems or like everybody knows you don't go to this chat room or that but like in the beginning I didn't well, when know you're that. So emotionally ready, what do you mean? Like what kind Like of having adult conversations about things. Like if you are curious about certain topics, mm -hmm. very innocently you Google something, it can take you to a million different places. Right. And it takes an emotional intelligence as well as an intellectual intelligence to be able to say, where do I belong? What is appropriate for me for my age? And, and, mm -hmm. and navigating that, especially when you're better at it than your parents is, and being introduced to that a little bit earlier um, just to adult themes and contents. Mm -hmm. And like I said, like something, not anything that's horrible, but is is for sure inappropriate. Sure. Yeah. And and there's also the horrible too. There's lots of pornography and things like that. And, and as the internet, and again, has been around for a while, obviously we all know that people are trying to trick 
kids and adults into clicking on things that they had no intention of of searching out, right. but they trick them into yeah. doing that. And we had to figure that out in yeah. real time because there was no one to warn us because we were the first ones to do it. Well, and f- like for me as someone who's had access to Google for as long as I can remember in my yeah. life. <laughs> <laughs> right. But even for me, it's intimidating sometimes to know that like you can find your way into corners of yeah. the internet that like, will change you and that will affect the way you see the world in ways that can be enlightening and exciting and yeah. it can also be scary and upsetting and, you know, have long-term traumatic effects. And so I'm sure as a parent, that's just exacerbated because you probably feel so out of control. Yeah, and, yeah. And, and you do. And of course, we were monitoring the whole thing. We were right. watching and having discussions. And it, it just was interesting because we were having the discussions that I didn't know we were going to have. You know, like I wasn't prepared, and I, which is a nice theme for parenthood anyway, right. of, oh, you're on this. And he would look at me innocently like, yeah, what's the matter? And I'd be like, well, these are, we're not going to have yeah. conversations here. Why? Uh, because, you know, yeah. and I had to do my research and figure out why. And it, and again, and sometimes it's not even just about content, but it's having like kind of like a nihilistic view of the world, you know, that kind right. of stuff that you just don't, you know that your kids are going to be exposed to it when they're older, but you want to have them stay kids yeah. as long as they can while being aware. And so... We found some software um, about internet safety. I mean, because again, now that's everywhere, but it wasn't. Mm-hmm. Uh, we talked about it a lot. I put off giving my kids access to um, cell phones, you know, mm-hmm. uh, uh, until they were older. Um, we talked a lot about intent and how if you don't know someone, they it's like that. Str- right. It's like a modern day st- stranger danger. Yeah, like they don't have but, your best interest in heart because you can't see the face. Exactly. Of the first you're and we, I had to talk about like people are trying to trick you because they want you to become addicted to their product or to their whatever, um, so that they can make money. And why would people do that? You know, and yeah. and having those hard conversations. Well, and so, I mean, that's when it all focused in, and I feel like I had a real. Just baptism by fire, like right now you got to figure it out, you know, within a couple of months of like intent, time spent, privacy, access, perspective, balance in life, all right there. And it, mm-hmm. it felt overwhelming. When we say before parenting with the internet, in my mind, was so easy and straightforward. (laughs) That's what I mean. I mean, we had nobody else to go, oh, oh, watch out for that and that. It's not just about pornography, although that's a huge thing. And, and, And speaking of which, I mean, we would go to these like school meetings and meetings at our church about, you know, internet safety. Yeah, again, in the early days where there wasn't any research yet, and we hadn't studied this for more than a couple of, you know, of years. And they would give us these statistics, these alarming statistics of, well, you know, by this age, your kid will come across, you know, full-blown pornography, awful stuff. And the age kept like dropping, dropping. And I remember going to one particular school meeting about internet safety, and it was like, you know, 80% Eighty percent of all, you know, seven-year-olds will see, and oh, we were just yes. like, "What?" Yeah, and how then is there it any gets, hope as a parent? and by eleven, it's a hundred percent, and we were like, "Wait, what? A hundred? Like, oh, oh because back in the day, you think, oh yeah, they're gonna, you know." one of their friends is going to have a cable TV show that they'll see something that we didn't want them to, or uh, there'll be a magazine somewhere. You know, it just seemed less prevalent. And it really was like a depressing thought as a parent to go, oh, 100% of all of your kids are going to have to deal with this, so you're going to have to talk about it in a different way. And so there was this sense of like panic that is not, helpful i think because it creates a lot of shame and fear and all of that but but that's where we lived for a while mm-hmm. and we tried a lot of things so we tried the filters right um and we tried a, you know different kinds and we tried 
timing, you know, like, and being in the own, you know, own room when you're on the internet. And we have certain rules, right? And some mm. of them worked more effectively than others. Yeah, it seems like some rules in that context feel more like a Band-Aid, while yeah. some are more of like a helpful structure to help build good habits. Back it's, in the day, we had this filter, and it filtered out everything. Like, my husband sure. and I couldn't get any work done. <laughs> like, it wouldn't show you anything. Like, it wouldn't even let you go, like, on PBS. Like, it was like, right. we would laugh about it. We're like, okay, this filter. Notorious <laughs> child predator. PBS. Well, that's what yeah. I mean. Like it was, we were like, oh, yeah. come on. So we had to find like the right kinds of filters, but we realized that our kids were smarter than us and could get around the filters mm -hmm. so much easier than we could. And we would watch them do it like right in front of, we were like, what are you doing? <laughs> I remember coming home one day and saying to the kids, um, you know, hey, I heard on the news <laughs> that there is, that some kids are hiding their secret accounts and like and different like horrible websites behind a calculator app and they know how to do it. And I was like saying it like, you guys, you I know this. this. Can you believe this? And my son goes, yeah, you want me to show you how to do it? And I was like, <laughs> no, what? <laughs> Wait, you've heard it. Old news, mom. What? A, you've heard about it. Yeah. And B, you know how to do it. Right. And C... I do you do this? And I was like, There's let me no see your phone. How many calculator yeah. apps do you have? So I thought, how many other things, which is something that I said to him. I was like, what else do you guys know how to do that I don't know about? And they just sort of looked at me like they had never considered that I wouldn't know because they were so young. Right. When you acknowledge that you can't stay ahead of it. Yeah. Like it changes the conversation. It totally does. Because there's no way you'll be able to put in all the barriers to no. stop them mm -mm. from those things. At that point, it's how do we prepare them to be able to confront those things and navigate them after they've seen it. Yeah. It just taught me it's going to happen. Yeah. And so what are you going to do about that? Okay, so when we talk about screen time, I really feel like it's a singular parenting issue that brings more judgment, more anxiety, more stress, fewer answers, fewer takeaways. And I think that it's one of those weird things that we all kind of know what we should be doing. None of us feel super confident in it. It's still a an experiment in a lot of ways and didn't exist a generation ago. And so when you think about parenting and all that's asked of you, you know, you have to keep them fed and clean, clean and make them go to school. And <laughs> that, that those three things alone are just very difficult. <laughs> and then there's this online world and it's and it almost doubles the amount of work. And on top of that, that technology is always changing. So you think, oh, I've got texting down. And then it, that's just the tip of the iceberg, right? Because there's always something new. And so it's ever evolving, ever changing. And we're constantly being told how important and critical it is to their development as well. So I feel like I'm really trying to set the stage here that this is an overwhelming problem. <laughs> and so this is probably one of our most critical council of moms. And that's why I really took great pains to select the right kind of people. And when I say the right kind of people, I mean smart, intelligent, have the background of raising kids, have tried lots of different things and really thought about this, but have all made different decisions because their families are different and they're different. So I thought this is will be a really interesting council of moms because we're going to get right into it. So today we have Katie Craig, Amy Bingham, and Casey Faulkner. Okay, so we got a lot to do. Cool, 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 cool. <laughs> so cool, cool, many cool. things. We got to solve this. <laughs> um, it's e really easy to start off this discussion, I think, being really judgy, first of all. I, I do. I just And I just want to put it out there first for the Council of Moms because I feel like that's what we are given so much. Like, oh, you're doing it wrong. Oh, you're, well, what do you do? Oh, your kid has a cell phone? Well, I don't let my kids get cell phone, you know, that kind of stuff. And I will be honest, I've tried a lot of I've tried a lot of different things. I try to stay informed. I 100% absolutely could do a better job. So I feel unsure about this. So, what is your whole attitude with just going into this discussion about screen time? Well, I have older kids. Um, most of them have moved out, but I do still have one in the house. And my attitude is, 
You win some, you lose some. <laughs> I'm doing my best. <laughs> That's a healthy attitude. No, I mean, real honesty here. No judgment. Um, I will say that when my daughter, I said, I'm going to do Lisa's podcast, and she said, oh, that's fun. What are you going to talk about? And I said, screen time, and she started laughing. Then I knew that maybe I wasn't <laughs> the best expert <laughs> Oof. to be on this podcast. But, yeah, I, when you say that we people come at it with, with judgment, I think that was probably us in the beginning, right, maybe? Mm-hmm. And now <laughs> yeah. we're kind of at that spot where we're like, well, we've tried everything. Mm-hmm. Every single kid is different. Every single situation is different. And I think part of it is I love my screen time too, right? And that's the other thing. Like, do I want <laughs> to be a hypocrite when I'm like, get off your phone when I'm on the TV for the next two hours, you know? So it's been a it's been a struggle. Uh, I don't know. Does anyone know what they're doing? Can we ask? <laughs> no. Like maybe Katie? <laughs> no. No. I am a confessed Luddite. Meaning, like, you know, when new technology comes out, then I'm always like, "Mm, where's a hand cart? Like, I just. (laughs) You'd have the kerosene lamps in your house. Exactly. Guys, get in the buggy. Let's practice with our quill and our (laughs) ink writing, you guys. It worked then. It works now. So that's often where I start, which is I'm not saying that's good or bad. I'm just saying that's where I often start. And so that can be. That can be a hindrance because then, you know, every a lot of my kids are much more eager to adopt things, and I may not be. And so I'm like, well, I'm just not going to do that. But the thing is, they are, and so I need to be aware no matter what. No matter what my own ideas are, I need to be aware. That's mm-hmm. the, the, such a tricky part of it, right? If you're like, okay, I've thought this out, and I've researched it, and I've decided this. And if the kids are like, okay, and they're over somewhere else, you know, then— you want to be where they are. You want to go where they are. I was serving in my like youth um, church group, and I remember I had like a flip phone, and I hadn't learned how to text yet. This is totally aging me. And the um, the leader over the group was like, "You got to text these youth," and I was like, "Nope, I'm not getting into that. I don't. I've got little kids that I don't need to learn anything else." And then the leader of the church was like, "Yeah, but if you're gonna like serve these." girls and and boys at this age, you have to go where they are. So I learned how to text, and that's how I learned how to text, and he was right. Yeah, I think along that same line, um, something like, I find myself saying often, and I don't know how to TikTok. I know <sighs> everyone's doing it, and I, I kind of love it, but like even just thinking about it stresses me out. I do have it on my phone now, but I never open it. But I will find myself saying to my other girlfriends who are struggling with kids, who are mm-hmm. like facing ADHD, or one was just um, diagnosed with diabetes, and I was like, get them on TikTok, because I've... There's a lot of stuff out there, a lot of information. There's a lot of bad information, too. But that's the way that kids are processing things now. And, uh, yeah, we have to be aware so that we can direct them. Um, But I think that there's a lot of good information out there, and we can't just, like, have a hard line of you're not going to do that. You can't do this. Uh, I also think a big thing for me is I'm trying to take— any sort of shame out of that because the thing that worries me the most Mm -hmm. is if you walk into a room and your kid is like trying to hide their phone or something like Mm -hmm. that. And so that for me has been like, I don't care what you have on there. I really, really don't. I just, I don't want you to feel shame over that. Um, So I like it when they're, when I'm in the room and they're looking at their TikToks or they're sharing it with me or whatever. To me, that feels like a comfortable place of, uh, taking the shame out of I don't I don't want to shame them of, of them mm-hmm. make, making them feel like you know anything that they're doing on their phone is wrong necessarily even though there are some scary things there <laughs> I think you bring up a really good point um, Amy about the value of like sharing together uh-huh. instead of um, being isolating and that's something that that um, has been a sticky spot for me is the idea that this device is isolating that you know mm-hmm. my kids and I have older kids, I have married kids, and I still have younger kids. And so I have a really wide age range. And so when we're sitting in a room as a family, and my older kids are all on their phones, and maybe they're even interacting and playing a game together on their phones, my younger kids who don't have phones feel like extremely left out, like Mm -hmm. excruciating, because they're not part of this club, you know, because they're very young. And so, and that's been like a thing to navigate of how do we how do we use this thing and let it bring us together instead of letting us feel isolated? Um, 
And so some of the things we do are like we have um, family home memeing, which is we all <laughs> go together. Uh-huh, <laughs> memeing. We all go together and the kids, um, and they take turns casting their memes on the TV so we can all watch <laughs> them together and laugh at them together. And it's like my little ones love it because then they're in the club mm-hmm. and my older ones love it because they get to share hilarious things and they become inside jokes. But it's a thing to navigate. Like how are we going to use it as a, as a tool to bring mm-hmm. us together instead of something that's going to isolate us? Yeah, there's so much thinking about micromanaging of it when they're little and like screen time and actual app locking or whatever. And like, Mm -hmm. it's a part-time job and I've been there and I've done all of it. You have to try. It's Mm -hmm. always changing. I mean, I'm on Visco. No, (laughs) thank goodness you are. You know, I actually have Casey watching some of my kids on Visco because I can't do it. I, <laughs> I don't outs- know what that is. I know. I've outs- uh, well, I've outsourced some of you, it. And because- you can do that because it's just a lot. It's, it's so, so overwhelming. But one thing, and I was thinking about it today, like, what did I, have I done anything that worked? No. <laughs> but it's always faces and like thinking about screen time. I gotta, I get a notification about my screen time and I'm going to say this. It was 13 hours a day average. <laughs> Wow. I was like, how could thank you for you know sharing what? that? No I think it, counts. I think it, ca- it must count podcasts and listening to streaming music. It has to because I'm like, <laughs> I agree. Like, yeah. I am admitting this I'm on admitting air. That. Yeah. But like, I yeah. was like, how are these people like an hour, like talking about, well, I give my kid an hour a day. I'm like, I just clocked in at 13 hours per day average. <laughs> yeah. How, how yeah. can that be? Like, should I be turning it off? Anyway, honestly, <laughs> that's embarrassing. But I think it's podcasts. It's me streaming the Lisa Clark show. <laughs> <laughs> thank you. <laughs> but what I come back to, as I, I'm just always trying, I do yeah. think you have to try. Trying is worth it. You will fail. Don't get discouraged. What I'm coming back to now is I I hope or I at least tried. If you're still in it, here's my advice. <laughs> try to teach your kids to self-regulate because it's, it's fleeting that you're in charge. I mean, you could have a five-year-old that could probably navigate your phone better than you. Mine can. I can't lock it. They can, they can get around yeah. any kind of thing. And so I need to teach them some kind of balance through my example of only listen, having 13 hours a day of screen <laughs> time. listening to quality entertainment do as I like say, the Lisa not show. As I do. Mm-hmm. But like, te- these are basic skills. These are parenting skills yeah, you always are. come back to. Balance, self-regulating, a, a little bit of discipline. Mm-hmm. But even barring that, if you can't even do that, <laughs> which, you know, again, you win some, you lose some. You have to think about a relationship with your kids so that if they do something crazy or spend a thousand dollars in game. <sighs> oh man. <laughs> and we've known children who've done that. Yep. <laughs> in game purchases. <laughs> you you have to essentially with all kinds of parenting stuff have a relationship where they will not hide from you or lie to you or shame That's, you and you mm-hmm. have a way to deal with this and they'll talk to you and you can it, it always comes back to that whether it's you know technology or dating or any of these kinds of things. You just you have to have worked on that. So mm-hmm. I don't know. It's the long <laughs> game. I, you know, yeah. I always feel bad for younger moms and dads who are like, did you know that, you know, dot, dot, dot. And some of the stuff I know because we've learned the hard way or whatever about what's out there, right. you know, and this is a million things. This is a new social media tool or this is a new meme or this is a game and or this is a whatever it is. And that realization And even if I don't know about it, I'm like, welcome to the club because there will always be something that you don't know. In fact, I remember being that mom. And when my oldest, it was 12 years old, and I had heard something about how you can hide really gross, for lack of a better (laughs) word, really gross apps under a calculator icon. So you are checking. So even when (laughs) well-intentioned... Parents are checking their kids' phones. They're doing their due diligence. They're checking the screen time. They're checking what's on there. They're checking their history that you could hide it under the calculator app and it won't come up in your history. I come home for dinner (laughs) thinking I'm going to be so clever and tell my kids that. Like, did you know? And my 12-year-old and my 10-year-old who didn't at the time have phones were like, yeah, we know that. (laughs) Yeah, and let me show you how to do it on your phone. Mm -hmm. My 12-year-old knew how, he thought I was asking him to do it. And I was like, (laughs) no, I'm saying warning, stop. And that was the, 
beginning of the end of where you're like, oh, this, I will never catch up <laughs> to what's this or that. You know, there was just a, a viral video going around about this mom that's like, oh my gosh, and my kids were playing in Minecraft. And did you know that there's chat rooms like this and that there's predators like this and that kind of stuff? And my heart just broke. And I saw lots of people sharing it like, oh, we got to do something. We got to do something. And I just thought... Yeah, and this is going to be a lot harder than you think because it's not about shutting it down and it's not about never giving them access because this video was also admitting, like, they can go over to your friends, their friend's house. They can, you know, there's so many different access points now that it really has boiled it down for me. And I'm, I'm trying to think about, like, the best, most encouraging advice that we can give knowing that it's always changing. I think, too, just it's so hard not to get in that panic mode, especially when you have little kids. Like, everything you hear is bad. And I'm not discounting that there is really bad stuff out there, and it is scary. And especially when you have little kids, you want to protect them from that. But we also have to recognize that there is a lot of good there, too. And that's like my son, who's autistic, who's the greatest, but has a hard time making social connections. He was um, moderating his D and D club that they do online yesterday, you know, <laughs> I love that. And he has a blast, and he gets together with his friends every once in a while in person. He's not completely antisocial, but it gives them an opportunity. Instead of sitting around feeling lonely, he has five hours where he's, you know, getting together with these people with similar interests. And I mean, that is something that we have that other generations have not. And so, and then just thinking about the pandemic and how disconnected we were from everyone and just having some sort of outlet to be able to talk to people was huge. So for me, recognizing that a lot of our kids' social activity happens online and to take that away completely is really kind of cutting off maybe like one of their best supports. So you just have to be really careful about that and um, not isolating them further by saying, you know, you can only be on for 30 minutes or whatever. Though, again, no judgment if you were able to do that because my kids look at me and obviously laugh. So <laughs> you have kids that don't do that, good for you. <laughs> yeah, you almost can't. You're not going to beat them at this game. Like right. try to stay informed, but... Here's a here's a tip. Yeah. You're never going to be a step ahead of them. They're always going to know more. Something I found <laughs> in later parenting years playing dumb. <gasps> is you. Awesome. That's a great one. It's okay, like, this is oh, really yeah, great. I don't Everybody know how listen to do that. <laughs> oh, can I sign on? To, oh, sorry. I don't know the Netflix password and you know like you, you, it could work that way too if you don't know stuff and sometimes I know more than they think I do and I can actually get into certain things. So talk about the benefits of playing dumb. So sometimes you just have to play dumb and it's okay to embrace the like, oh, she's just a dumb mom. She doesn't understand technology. Let them think that. It it is mostly true. (laughs) And then you can just be like, yeah, sorry, I don't know that login or we can't do this or, but then, you know, maybe you really do know and you can get on their phone and look under the calculator and see. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> There's no shame in that. Or There's you're no just shame including in that. yourself in the <laughs> yeah. narrative, you know, because now they're like, oh, you know, mom. She's Because whenever my son talks about his interests, I'll say like, oh, you mean that anime or whatever, just like pronouncing <laughs> yep. it wrong. And mm-hmm. they think it's so funny that I can't pronounce it. Of course, I know how to pronounce it. But then you get involved when they're talking about this stuff because yeah. they're making fun of you. And that's what moms are for, right? That might be the only interaction you have with them. Yeah. <laughs> And they think it's so funny, but it's really strategy on your part. (laughs) Then they grow up and they realize, oh, they were really smart. Yeah. Well, do they? Well, I don't know. I'm waiting I'm for hoping. that day. <laughs> it might come someday when they're a mom. Yeah, yeah. and they're behind. They're behind on something else. But I, you make a really good point. We're never going to be two steps ahead. We're going to be a few steps behind. And so, like you're saying, there's not like one block. There's not one magic tool that's going to fix it all. It's we have to teach them things like the self regulation and mm-hmm. and talk about the lessons when they happen. Right mm-hmm. when these things happen and they do something dumb, then that. We need to take it as an opportunity for like, oh, well, what what are the teaching moments and how can we debrief this and make this, you know, something that we can learn from and move forward, right? Remove the shame and say, all right, well, what do we need to do to move forward? I remember the first time our um, 12-year-old emailed his sister's teacher and told her that um, she was hurting his sister's feelings and she needed to do better. And we found out about this because she emailed us and said, I am so sorry if I've offended your family. Is there anything we can do? We were like, I don't even know what she's talking about. And then scrolled down and we were like, oh, oh, the power of email. 
And of course, our 12 year old, we were like, So, did you send an email to someone? And he was like, mm, Yeah. And we were like, And did you tell her some stuff? And he's like, Yeah. But I mean, like, who am I? I'm a kid. And I, we we're like, <laughs> She's in tears. So, yeah. and we, but like, it was an opportunity to talk about, like, is this something you would say to this person to their face? And he was like, No. And we're like, Yeah. So you sent it, you know, and, <laughs> and it became like a teaching moment. Yeah. And I think there are, a myriad of those kind of examples where we can be like, all right, so this happened and now how can we talk about it? And I think being more open and vulnerable about it. I remember mm-hmm. when, you know, when I was first a mom and just trying to be like, they got to respect Perfect. me. Yeah. I've got to be, you know, they have to know that they can come to me. I am an authority. And then, yeah, about the time about my oldest was about 12 was when it all started unraveling. And I was <laughs> well, like, I can't. And I remember going to him and saying, because he thought I was being too strict and too restrictive with the computer time. And all of my friends do this and they don't want, and I'm like, I don't care. And and he didn't understand, and I couldn't really fully explain everything other than just, like, just trust me. Like, this is a big mess. Let's just not deal with it. And he was saying, it's also really good, and mm-hmm. it's also something I'm really good at, mm-hmm. and so I don't understand, like, why it's bad for me to be on the computer, but you'd rather me be watching TV. And it to me, it— it's the same. And so I had to real. I changed my mind. And I talked to him and I said, listen, and I just like kind of sort of let it all out, like <laughs> the authority. I'm like, listen, okay, so here's the thing. This is overwhelming and I don't know what it's going to do to your brain. And I am, I'm worried because you, you're good at it and you like it, that you're going to want to spend all of your time on it and that you're going to become addicted to it. And he goes, oh, you think that I'm going to be a neck beard. And I said, I, I, don't, I don't know what that is. And he goes, you think that I sh- I'm going to be somebody... <laughs> Should I not say that? That's what he said. I don't know if it's appropriate. Living in his, mom's, ba- living in his mom's basement. Well, that's what he, it's literally what Miles like said. 15 screens <laughs> around. Said, yeah, he said, you're afraid that I'm going to be this overweight guy that sits in it and lives in his mother's basement and never leaves the house and just drinks Mountain Dew and eats Doritos with 16 screens all around and never sees daylight. And I was like, I didn't even know that that was, is that a thing? (laughs) And he's like, oh, I get it. You're worried that yeah, I understand. This is just something that I like to do. This helps me That's, with school. This like, and and it and it. He helped me see it in a different way. And I said, okay, so I'm always going to err on the side of like, hey, I also need you to see friends in real life. I need you to be outside, have other interests. And you're always going to be on the side of of just let me make my own decisions. And I said, and this is how this is going to go. But let's just be open and talk about it. And it didn't become then about minutes to earn and and elaborate systems, but it became about, I was trying to teach him how to Mm self-regulate. Because like we've said, like this is overwhelming to try to do for yourself, let alone all your kids. And I think we just need to recognize how savvy they are. They are savvy. We can Mm -hmm. say, did you know such and such happened? And like you said before, they know. So they know every, they know computer every, languages. every bad thing that can happen to them. I mean, even as like when my daughter was like eight or nine and I would, you know, be like, OK, I just want to make sure, you know, you don't talk to people that you don't know, blah, blah, blah. And yeah. they look at you like you're the biggest idiot That's alive. It. I remember when I was like, mm-hmm. don't know, ever Mom. give out your personal information online. I got the <laughs> biggest eye roll. They're like, That's basic. They teach us that in kindergarten. Yeah. And I'm like, I have to say that. it, though. Yeah. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I just want to say to parents out there listening that (laughs) it's going to start with you discovering their secret Instagram account. (laughs) It's okay. They all have one. (laughs) You need to find it. (laughs) Or maybe one of their friends will find it. Or maybe shock you. (laughs) Please do not feel shame. Okay. It's, it happens to all of us. And when I say all of us, I mean, all of us. (laughs) Yep. But let me share what I feel is an inspiring end to this story. Okay, okay. <laughs> My son, who's now a young adult, he teaches a digital literacy class at the library. It's mostly older people. He often recommends that I attend. <laughs> but um, How kind of him. <clears throat> this is in the library, and I work there too, so I've, I've heard about this. It's just so fun to see him doing this. And there was a guy that came in that had to speak to my son. It was like telling the people at the desk, i got to talk to... Sam, I, I need some help. And I found out that this was an old, older gentleman who knew he could trust my son, who I raised, because he had taken oh, <laughs> some photos of his wife. No. 
<laughs> boudoir photos, let's say, <laughs> and saved them on a thumb drive, but was afraid that he put them on the cloud and did not want his kids to find them when he dies. <laughs> You can't come up with my for him. Listen, and good I, for him. And, and I, these and are I parenting issues we never we knew. Never we never have to deal he dealt with. with it. He dealt with it. And like the guy was like, I could put a picture or I could put a piece of paper over the screen so that you don't have to see it and stuff. You know what? I raised a son that <laughs> that dealt with that and taught him, taught Problem. that man how to handle this situation. And for that, I'm proud. You know, you good win job. some, you lose some. <laughs> good job. That was a win. <laughs> <laughs> that is that true. Is amazing. <laughs> no, that's life. I agree. 2022. And that brings up such a good point about like to all parents who haven't experienced this yet, right? Like I think if we are still carrying around judgment for other people, mm-hmm. it's maybe just because we haven't been surprised yet. So I don't want to say like it's coming, but If you parent long enough, you're going to be surprised. And I think that helps you to give grace to other people because you realize how much you need grace and how much you don't know. So if you know everything, then um, that's great. Give it a little bit more time. <laughs> enjoy it. Give yeah, it just a little enjoy more time. it. Enjoy and the if, ignorance. And if you already have your eyes opened and you realize what the world is like and what your kids are like and what life is like and what surprises are like, then welcome to the club. It's a lot more real in here. Mm-hmm. We're, we'll clear a, a place for you on the Council of Moms. You belong here. Totally, right? <laughs> totally. Like, because it, it is a shock, and that first time you do feel like, is it just me? What did I do wrong? What can I do? When it's isn't that a metaphor for raising kids? Like it's their you know, their choice, and you try to teach all the good things and the things that you've learned so that they'll do better than you do. And when you're dealing with something that's so new, because we didn't have technology like this, like we're talking about with social media specifically when we were their age, then we we do need to, I think rely on each other a lot more to say, I am so sorry that, to acknowledge like how that feels when you feel like other people have, a, you know, were able to trick your kid or <laughs> were able to, or your kid was looking for something that mm-hmm. you didn't think that they should be or that they, that is healthy for them. All of those are, are is, is part of parenting. I just have one more question. Do you think that we take this issue too seriously or not seriously enough? And I know that that's a big question. Well, you know what I'm going to say. The confessed Luddite. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. I just think I have a book in my Amazon wish list that is um, a woman, and she's talking about, like, research now that is coming out, and it's specifically about younger children in screen time. And um, she's saying, like, for all these years, then we've been doing this experiment without research, and now here's the research, mm-hmm. and, and it's not great. And so that— That, I feel, is something that there is now that we've had this time and that we have the resources and we can do this kind of research, then I think we do need to look at it maybe without the blinders on and be a little bit more realistic about, okay, we do know these are the effects and we know that these other things were myths, right? And now we can move forward with, you know, maybe more information. And listen, even if we are not reading books about it, even just having been, you know, now experiencing screen times ourselves and noticing the changes. Like I cannot watch an entire movie, right? Like everything needs to be in very short amounts, Mm. clips, and I need to check my phone while I'm doing it. And then I miss it. So then I have to rewind it. And then I miss it again. And like, obviously (laughs) this is taking an effect on us and it's going to take effect on our kids too. And I think we need to take it seriously. I just don't know how to do that (laughs) really. Or I mean, really, that's what the way that our world is going. So it, it's hard in that respect because we don't have any research. We don't have any past experience to draw from. You know, I was just read an article about how thanks to um, technology and getting cell phones to girls in India, the rates of literacy mm-hmm. and education are so, you know, are just exploding. And I thought, oh, this is what this was supposed to be, right? Yeah. Like creating opportunities for kids. You know, uh, I have a lot of friends that have kids with special needs, and this is changing their ability to communicate and to self-regulate. And, you know, that this kind of technology made it possible so that my husband could communicate with mm-hmm. the world for the and and, and live right. so people with disabilities and I mean there are so many positive things about it that when we immediately rush into the negative again not that it doesn't need to be addressed but that 
I do think that part of the conversation that's missing with with our kids is directing their attention to all the good that's possible with it. Mm -hmm. That we talk so much about the dangers and the fears that sometimes we forget to talk about all of the ways that it can just really expand and serve other people and themselves. It's obvious as parents that we're just fumbling around with our best intentions and a lot of love, but what does the research and the experts actually say? So I'm here with Amy Morin, host of the Very Well Mind podcast. So Amy, what kind of toll does, you know, kids surfing on the internet, um, spending so much time have on, on the kids? Well, you know, it depends. We talk so much about the negative aspects of social media and being on the internet too much. And there certainly are those, but it can be positive too. It's sort of like uh, almost anything, TV, uh, the radio, anything people are listening to has the ability to, to help or to hurt. So it's important for parents to be involved enough so that they know that their kids are using the internet in a way that can be healthy for them. So do you think that it's the same thing as just, you know, watching TV, then playing a game on the internet? Does it have the same effect on them? Well, it can. However, we also know the internet can be more dangerous. There's uh, strangers, there's phishing scams, there's Mm. lots of things that kids can get themselves into. They might view things that aren't going to be on TV, but they're available on the internet. And so we need to make sure that kids are well educated on what's appropriate, what's not, and what to do if they get themselves in trouble. You know, I I feel like in parenting, there's this like disconnect with, well, I've taught my kids this. I've taught them the internet safety or I've taught them to. Right. Know. And then there's the, well, they're just kids and they're learning. So how much monitoring do you think parents should be doing? Depends on the child's emotional maturity. Sometimes we give cell phones to 12-year-olds and we forget that just because they're able to dial the phone and they know lots about apps doesn't mean that they're ready or that they're mature enough to to deal with the ups and downs. So I think the younger the kids are, the more monitoring we need to do as they grow older. And we see, okay, they can handle uh, not texting somebody back if it's an inappropriate message or that they're able to stick to healthy websites or they're able to limit their time so that they aren't glued to their phone. Then, you know, you can back off a little. But if you have a kid that gets themselves in trouble post things they're not supposed to, you're constantly having conversations about it, then you know they need more monitoring. Yeah, I think that that sort of gray area is where, as parents, we have a lot of anxiety, right? Like, right. we, we kind of check in, or at least for me personally, and look at something and say, hey, no, no, this isn't consistent with what I've taught you. And then it, it opens up, I think, a, a conversation, but also it can be just really frustrating because we don't have a lot of time to check everything. How do you handle that specifically of all of the different apps and technology and games and interaction? How do you even monitor that effectively? So there's several things you can do. There are parent parental control apps that you can look up and figure out which one's a good one for you. If you want to have ongoing monitoring of what your kids are doing right down to Mm -hmm. who they're texting and what they're saying. So for younger kids, sometimes that's a good idea. For older kids, they usually know their way around apps and things better than the adults do. So you might ask questions like, what kind of apps are your friends using? Or what's going on in social media these days? You don't want to say, what do you do on TikTok necessarily, but to say, what are your friends doing on TikTok? Have any of them ever got in trouble on there? Have they ever posted something you thought was inappropriate just to open the door and have mm-hmm. ongoing conversations and to know, yeah, I check up on these apps or I follow you on some of these things and kind of ask them questions. Like, can you show me why people love this? I just don't understand why so many people are glued to TikTok these days or whatever the latest app is. Just to get an idea of what they think about it, have some conversations about what's good and what's bad about it. How might somebody get in trouble? And listen to it, hear what your kids say and then have some conversations about what would you do if and fill in the blank with somebody texted you something inappropriate or if a stranger reached out and said they know your home address, what would you say back? I can't tell you how many teenagers in my therapy office have said things like, well, my parents don't let me have a, this specific app, mm-hmm. but I got it and they don't know I have it. Oh, God. And so when we ban when we ban certain apps from kids or certain things, they're pretty savvy at figuring out how to get access to those things anyway. And then they keep it a secret. And that's what you don't want, because then if they get get themselves into trouble, they're not going to dare come to you because you've told them they couldn't be on it. 
I know, but it's just so much easier to say, nope, we're not doing it. Like, you know, turn right. off the TV and and I'm going to take away your phone until you learn this lesson. When a line has been crossed or when we're actually really concerned about our kids' usage or unbalance of it or even if it, it lies in, in dangerous territory, what what is an effective way to course correct? So, right, and that's a great way to word it is course correct rather than saying you're banned from your phone for life now or you can't use the Internet ever again, which probably most parents have been there. We've threatened something like that, but a realistic (laughs) Oh, oh, I know empty threats, yes. Right. (laughs) Dang it. Might be to set time limits on, okay, after 7 p.m., I take your phone or you can't sleep sleep with your phone in your room. Uh, to make some more realistic rules like that, or you lose your phone privileges for one week, uh, or in different ways you can use control so that they can't go to certain websites for uh, for a while. Those sorts of things, I think, to then just come up with a, a time frame and then maybe make it clear, how can you earn it back? And I always like the idea of having a, a contract with kids that says, here's my expectations. If you're going to have your phone, here's what I expect from you. If you break any of the rules, here's what's going to happen and outline it right up front so that hmm. there's no question about it. Have you done this in your home? Yeah, so I'm a foster parent. And so rules with foster kids, get a, there's other things that we have to take into consideration. Sometimes foster kids, the older ones, come to me with a phone already. Sure. Um, sometimes kids have never had a phone and I don't know them very well. So I don't just give them a phone either. So there's lots of different rules in our house. But whenever it comes to things like social media, we always come up with a contract just to say, here's the rules in our house. Oh, that's so. That, I think that's so useful because it sort of takes the emotion out of it. So your your contract. What are some of the things that that would be on it? So it might um, have to do with um, safety issues, and so of course, with all kids, there are safety concerns. With foster children, we have specific ones, but you can't put up. You can't put your address out there, or if you you don't want to post what school you go to, or certain photos that show stuff in the background because sometimes kids will innocently take a selfie in front of your mailbox that shows (laughs) your street address, things like that. And also then what do you do if you receive uh, something that's scary or inappropriate Mm -hmm. or you don't know how to respond or if you're questioning whether this person is really who they say they are, what do you do? Well, the rules are that you come to an adult and and tell us about it and then we'll help you figure out what the next step is, but that you don't want to just hide it or ignore it or pretend it's not existing. I think that this is an exhausting element of parenting for a lot of people. Um, And I think it's particularly difficult on, you know, single parents and people who are just trying to, you know, literally put food on the table, right, and and raise their kids in the best way. And it's this new element to parenting that we can't ask our parents or our grandparents, you know, for advice. Knowing that, where do you think that we really need to focus our efforts on as parents? I think the one of the biggest things right now is the amount of time that we're all spending on our digital devices. As parents, most of us are guilty of staring at our phones more than we should. So I think one of the best gifts we can give our kids is time limits on the on the phone and rules about, yeah, you can't use your phone at the dinner table or you can't use your phone in the car. It's okay to look out the window. And set some limits like that so that your kids will then learn it's okay to be bored. It's okay to be anxious. It's okay to be lonely sometimes. I don't have to depend on my phone for everything. Mm -hmm. And then our kids will learn to connect with people in real life rather than just feeling like they have this virtual world where they can text people about their problems or post it on social media. You want them to be able to talk to people about it over the phone or in person as well. So I think that's one of the best gifts we can give our kids is for us to be a good role model and to set some rules for them too. I love that. Like learning to connect with others in real life. I mean, that is a basic skill that that is going to bring them so much happiness and fulfillment and joy in life. And I don't know if we've always thought of it that way of like a skill to teach. But now it seems like that there are so many things to to distract you with that would pull your attention away from those those issues. It's really changed parenting a lot. Um, in your practice then, when you talk to teenagers, what do you think parents would be surprised to know uh, of like their basic wants and sort of needs and desires from their parents? So of course, kids always want to fit in. And so one of the biggest things for kids is they're like, oh, my parents are lame. They take my phone away from me before bedtime and the other kids get to text at night. So kids have that fear of missing out. And they're always concerned that my parents are so strict. It's embarrassing. Um, So that's a big one. And another one is, you know, most kids have been 
given an inappropriate text message or approached by a stranger, more kids than not, the vast majority of them have. And most of them struggle with what to do with it, and they struggle by themselves because they don't dare tell their parents because they're afraid that they're going to get in trouble, their parents are going to be mad, or uh, that they did something wrong. So I think it's so important for parents to have ongoing communication of what do you do when you mess up or what do you do when something happens and you don't know what to do? How do you come to me and this is what we're going to do about it so that kids feel like like you're on their team and they aren't just going to get punished for, for something that happened. Sure. And I guess finally, it's that that kids are really interested in, in social media and using it to, to fit in and to communicate with their peers. And it doesn't have to be a bad thing. A lot of them are doing really good things. They're cheering each other on. They're saying nice things to each other. And being I like hearing that. Each other. Yeah, we don't really hear so that a lot. Not, right. It's not always an awful place. Sometimes the kids are connecting to talk about wonderful things on the Internet as well. That, those are great conversations to have. I'm just, I'm kind of laughing at myself because when, uh, you know, I have three adults and, and two teenagers now just at home. And when my older kids, you know, I would ask them, oh, did somebody send you something inappropriate or have you ever gotten, they just kind of laughed. And I was like, this isn't funny because they knew what to do, right? Like they would like, oh yeah, you just, you ignore them or you, you know, whatever. But for me, my gut instinct was sort of the chicken little, like this guy is falling. This is awful. Why did... I should just take away these phones, right? Like that's that was my gut reaction in the beginning. And then knowing that it wasn't going to go away, that, you know, and that this was the part of our social contract and how people learn to get along, um, the conversations did change. And and it's been a lot of growing pains. It's, it's, it's really, you know, uncomfortable to have those kinds of conversations with your kids when you say, yeah, most kids will receive inappropriate texts from strangers. I mean, that hits me in the gut still today. Just to think, oh, you know, I don't want anyone to have access to my kids. So I sympathize with people who are like, nope, we're not doing this at all. Um, Knowing that that is a real struggle for a lot of parents, you know, you highlight a little bit of the good and, and the way that kids are able to rise to the occasion. What are some other positives that you have found that maybe we could lean into more as families? Well, one of the good things is, again, we can use our phones to build mental strength, whether you get your kid an app that they listen to meditation on and they can learn lots of skills that way. There's ways that kids can connect with a therapist. There's online therapy. They can use apps and tools and websites to do that sort of a thing. They can learn. They can connect with other kids. Maybe your child has a rare issue or illness. They can connect with kids across the planet who maybe struggle with the same problems. They couldn't do that if they weren't on the Internet. So just be able to talk about all of those positive things. How do you learn? There's kids can read books on their phones these days. They can do so many positive things and reminding yourself of that, looking for those opportunities and having conversations about it. I think kids are hearing so much about our social media is bad or our digital devices are, are ruining family life. And they hear those sorts of messages. They're thinking, actually, no, like my mom doesn't know what she's talking about or my dad doesn't understand because there's plenty of good things too. And then they kind of tune you out. So you want to think about the positives too, like this is really fun or it's really easy sometimes to not feel so bored or lonely when you pick up your phone, right? Yeah. When we talk about the positive aspects, you then gain a little more credibility because kids are like, yeah, I actually like my phone. And when all you talk about is how awful it is, I just think you don't understand. Yeah. You know, ways that we can bring our kids together just in a conversation or the way that we use technology also builds that kind of connection that we're ironically looking for, right, when we tell them to put it down. So I appreciate you having us look at the positive as well. And, you know, I've worked with parents, too, that will follow their kids on social media. And sometimes parents are like, well, it's a fun way to stay connected with my kids. I connect with them on Instagram or something like that where they share photos and memes and they're like, oh, I can actually connect with my kids in a slightly different way than when I'm just sitting down face to face having conversations. So I think there are ways we can even use it to connect with our kids a little bit differently. That's great. Is there anything that we haven't talked about that you would like to be able to highlight right now? Um, Again, I just would go back to the whole, as long as we're monitoring our own use, I can't tell you how many parents sit in my therapy office and they're scrolling through their own phones as we're talking about how kids need to be on their phones less. <laughs> so to try to make sure that we're we're showing kids, you know, yes, I'm sitting at your basketball game and I'm maybe feeling really bored, but I'm going to put my phone away. Or while we're at the dinner table, even if I heard my phone chirp in the other room, I'm going to ignore it. Mm-hmm. When we show kids those things, like, okay, um, it can be really powerful to teach them, okay, I don't need to use my phone all the time either. The last two years, no one could have predicted. Not only 
everything that it brought, but how much we would use the internet and in what ways. And it has changed the way that we parent. And none of us are doing it perfectly. And so this is a kind of conversation that we're gonna have to keep on having. The Lisa Show is a production of BYU Radio. This week, our show was produced by me, Lisa Valentine Clark, and Richie T. Stedman and McKay Minden, with help from Jocelyn Jensen and Michael Combs. If you want to continue the conversations we started today, join our group on Facebook called The Lisa Show Listener Community. And don't forget to leave us a review on Apple Podcasts or Spotify. That would really help us out. Next week on this show... I think Mother's Day is a really hard day. And I love being a mom and celebrating moms. Yes. I would love the best Mother's Day I ever had. I wasn't home with my kids. (laughs) And it's not because I don't want to be around them. I just think it's nice... It was nice because there's so many expectations, right? And you you listen about all these great moms and am I that mom? You know, it's kind of nice to just have a day for yourself. That's next week on The Lisa Show. 